comes to drafting a wide receiver in the first round, recently, the chance for failure is as high as any position in the game. Since the receiver boom of 2014 with Odell, Mike Evans, and Brandon Cooks, first-round pass catchers have been a fiery hellscape. From 2015 to 2019, just Amari Cooper has even made the Pro Bowl, not the highest bar ever set, with almost all the rest of them amounting to next to nothing. But then 2020 brought us, amongst others, Justin Jefferson, who's arguably had the greatest start to a receiver career ever, and then 2021, Jamar Chase, who was the lightning rod that helped send the Bengals to the Super Bowl. Between the high likelihood of drafting a first-round bust and the imminent firepower that can put your franchise over the proverbial hump, the first-round receiver stakes feel as high as ever, which brings us to Columbus, Ohio, where possibly the first two wideouts off the board will be Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, or as I like to call them, smooth and sudden. Olave's smooth style saw him set the all-time Ohio State touchdown record with 35 bombs over four seasons, and just like Wilson's sudden play style, he burst into the first-round conversation after putting up 1,000 yards and 12 touchdowns in his junior year. We're gonna break down those styles, their strengths, their weaknesses, where they fit into NFL offenses, and ultimately discover who is better. But, as we do, before all of that, I want to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, Albert. Albert is a new take on managing your money through a banking app, and it'll change the way you think about your finances. They take all the different money management aspects like banking, savings, investing, and budgeting, and put it into just one really simple to use app instead of having four or five apps to keep track of. This is not at all like the traditional banks are used to where they charge you those overdraft fees, charge you maintenance or minimum balance fees, and force you to waste hours until you can finally talk to an actual living non-robot human. Albert is completely different. It's free to sign up, super easy to use, and my favorite part is their team of financial experts they call geniuses that help you save, invest, and maximize your money and are literally always available to help you if you get stuck. To check them out, all you have to do is click the link in the description box or go to albert.com slash Rollins to download the Albert app today. That's albert.com slash Rollins. For a limited time when you open a checking account and connect a qualifying direct deposit, you'll get $150. Thanks to Albert, and now let's jump right back in looking first at Olave. And what you need to know about him is that he will be slotted into one very specific position in the NFL as a Z receiver. A Z receiver typically aligns to the same side as a tight end and plays off the line of scrimmage. Since he's a yard off the ball, it's more challenging to press the Z, and he's able to go in motion so you can move him around, allowing him to attack all over the field with his speed. Since he doesn't get pressed, the Z position lends itself to smaller, lighter, burner-type receivers who can take the top off the defense. Thy name is Chris Olave. His 439 40-yard dash only confirms how he plays on tape. He's a big play receiver with that aforementioned touchdown record, and his 14.5 yards per catch, matched with his 14.5 average depth of target, certainly shows that he's all about beating you deep. The critical aspect to effectively playing Z isn't just to be able to fly past corners, but to effectively run underneath routes so the corner can't just bail deep at the snap. One of Olave's best routes is the six-step speed out, which is as much of an art form as any route in the tree. To sell this speed out, he has to convince the corner he's running deep till the very last second, and then on his sixth step, he'll break outside. The key to the route isn't so much footwork, but body positioning. Here we have AJ Brown's speed out from this past season, where when he's pushing upfield, his body starts to slightly lean outside, which tips off Jalen Ramsey he's not actually running deep. Olave has to full-on sell out down the field, and if he can convince the corner he's running past him, at some point, if it's good, the corner has to respect that, and that's when he makes his break. Z receivers typically don't get press coverage, but when they do, they have to be ready, and one of Olave's strengths, especially when compared to Wilson, is how diverse his release package is. Both receivers show a comprehensive understanding of where they are in the quarterback's progression, so when they're on the backside of a concept, they know they have a little more time to work their defender. Here Olave uses what's called a diamond release, but he puts his own extra sugar on it, where instead of three hard steps to the outside, then breaking back in, he super slow plays it knowing CJ Stroud's progression starts to the opposite side, and he sets up the corner so good he can't even touch him. Those two examples then, of course, play into what'll be his primary function as a true Z, which is to win deep. 
baby. Threatening corners on underneath routes and an ability to create separation off the line are exactly what's needed from him to consistently win down the field. When he gives this similar look to the diamond release off the line, that helps him break the corner's leverage and get outside his frame. Maintaining the red line to give his QB room to drop this in is crucial, and then the gorgeous over-the-shoulder catch with the DB draped all over him is chef's kiss. He has that smooth, buttery movement style watching him fly down the field, but now let's contrast that with Garrett Wilson's suddenness and how he wins everywhere. While Olave plays as the Z, and at times in the slot, Wilson plays all over. A lot of the time he's positioned opposite Olave as the X receiver where he is on the line of scrimmage, which means he can't go in motion, so he's gonna face a lot more press coverage. While Wilson's just 5'11", 183, and probably won't play too much X in the NFL, he was still really good, and he also played the Z like Olave, Wilson actually ran a faster 40, and he played in the slot as well, anywhere you put him, he's gonna win. His average depth of target was much lower than Olave's at around 11, but his yards per catch was much higher at 15, and that's thanks to his ability to break tackles leading to more yards after the catch. His sudden style refers to his shifty, quick-twitch bendiness that he displays through every phase of the route, and although he doesn't quite have the release package Olave does, he is a better route runner. When he did play X, he was explosive and physical enough, despite his slight frame, and was able to use that suddenness to even break corners' leverage advantage. In one high coverages, corners usually play outside leverage to funnel the receiver inside to their safety help, so since Wilson is running this deep route, he's gonna have to find a way to create separation. He speed releases inside to create that immediate space, and because of how shifty he is, this looks like he's diving inside on some sort of shallow route. As he begins to push back upfield, look at the sharp angle he takes vertical to get the corner to anticipate something deep, then begins to the post before taking a violent step inside, immediately counters with his hands, and goes up to make the catch in traffic. He is a great route runner, but that's not just because of his movement ability, but the polish he shows on some of his routes. You can tell both receivers are coached really well since they attack corners' blind spots, which refers to how in most zone coverages corners put their butts to the sideline so they can keep vision on the quarterback while guarding their man, but then they can't see anything behind them, so more polished receivers can quickly get into this blind spot, and at that point, the corner's down bad. Wilson takes it a step further by subtly placing his hand on the back of right to give him the illusion that Wilson's directly behind him and running deep, but he's actually stopping and is using a push-by technique and throws him into the stands. Also, nice catch. As we saw earlier, he understands how to set up corners and show them one thing, then later give them another, and the subtlety of that hand lightly placed on the back is the difference between being covered and wide open. Against Wright again, who uses the same zone bail technique, Wilson glides into that blind spot and gives him that same hand move, so now Wright's also expecting the same, the curl, but then Wilson flies downfield with about 5 yards of separation and proves that his polish can also be what separates him as a receiver. He's a plus blocker in the run game, where the Buckeyes had Olave run routes to run defenders off instead of actually blocking them, Wilson can be very cerebral and then blow a dude up downfield. Of course, there's some bad in his game, like there is for everybody else, and with him, his issue is mainly inconsistency. He's only had the one year of plus production, but really I'm more getting at inconsistency on a snap-by-snap -snap basis, where he'll fall over a little too often during routes. At times he won't be sharp in his execution, whether that's drifting upfield or not getting to the right spot, and he'll have concentration drops that simply cannot happen. When looking at the other guy, Olave also has his fair share of bad without a doubt. As I just mentioned, he isn't much of a blocker at all based on how Ohio State didn't really ask him to, and blocking is a big part of the modern Z's job description in the NFL where they'll ask you to motion into the box to dig out a safety. He doesn't offer a lot in terms of yards after the catch, just 4 yards a pop, and he's got some issues snapping down at the top of his route. As a Z, he, of course, needs to push deep down the field, but then also needs to have the ability to stop on a dime on a comeback so corners can't just play him over the top, but he gets a little sticky on some of his snapdowns where they're not quite as clean. Here he gets kind of tripped up where he's not out of his break immediately, which would lead him to locating the ball quicker and probably not making this catch as difficult. Between the two of them, who is better? It's hard to really say. Just kidding, F that. I am firmly Garrett Wilson Hive.
He offers more from each individual position, and the suddenness and polish he shows during each of his routes makes me confident he can win in more places in more ways. Olave is somebody I'm definitely lower on simply because he feels more penciled into just one position, and I'm worried he's missing some of the prerequisites to that position, like being able to snap down and effectively break off his routes after pushing deep. I will take Wilson because he's more explosive, more versatile, and feels like he has the higher ceiling, despite the fact he probably has the lower floor due to only having his one year of good production, plus some of this inconsistency. Each team in the wide receiver market is weighing each of the pros and cons for both of these Buckeyes, while simultaneously weighing the pros and cons of the first round wide receiver from a bird's eye view. Does the recent precedent of bust after bust scare teams making one or both of these men fall? Or does the enticing recent all-pro level weapons make them excited and even reach to go and get their guy? Smooth, sudden, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, take your guy, improve your offense, help your quarterback, and it's bombs away.